All right, so welcome everyone to the first Hang with Willie uh, session here. Uh, we have a couple of sessions that are going to be coming up this week. Um, in case you don't know, let me just go through the, um, the schedule quick while we get some people coming on board. Uh, session today, right now, all right, there's going to be a session tomorrow, same time, I'm sorry, not tomorrow, Friday. Tomorrow we're out of the office because it's Thanksgiving. Um, Friday, 10, uh, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., so same time as today, that's going to be a beginner theory class. Today was more of a general question class, and I also have some uh, beginner theory as well to go through. Um, Friday, 3 o'clock to 4 p.m. is going to be an intermediate uh, to advanced theory class. We're not necessarily going to be doing just the Google Hangout. We're going to try also uh, a live YouTube event as well, so you can check that out. Uh, so if you just go back to hangwithwilly.com, you'll be able to get uh, the correct URL right there. <clears throat> and then finally, Saturday, uh, 12 to 1 o'clock, we're going to do a wrap-up, and then I also have some surprises for you as well. Um, okay, so what we're going to do today, first of all, uh, let's just talk about how this all works. Um, you'll notice that if you went to the link, there should be a button there in which you can ask a question. All right? So just go ahead and click that Ask Question button, and then that will pop up on my screen here, and I can answer those questions. So at any time during the session, if you find that, uh, you know, yikes, I just need, uh, I need help on this, you know, I'm not understanding what it is you're saying, you have a question, just go ahead and write in that question, and it'll, it'll pop up on my screen. All right, so now, as you've probably heard over the past several weeks now, we've been talking a lot about the Piano with, Will the piano with Willie method. And, you know, I wish I had like a, that fancy graphic up here. I almost had it before the, the live session. I'll have it ready for Friday. Uh, I think I figured out how to do it. Um, but uh, on that graphic, if you haven't seen it already, you see... Uh, three, uh, you know, three steps up here and three steps down here, and you'll notice that it kind of like makes this circle, right? And it kind of like brings them together. You, you kind of like feel like a, some, some energy there. And that's because um, what I found most successful both in my playing, my learning, my studying, and then also working with other, uh, other students is bridging the gap between working just on foundational stuff and actually having fun at the piano. Now I'm going to be honest with you, when I was younger, I just wanted to sit down and play, right? I just wanted to sit down and make stuff up and play songs and play stuff that, quite honestly, uh, kids at school would have recognized and maybe I'd become a little bit more popular. Ironically enough, I actually gained popularity for my playing, not because I played uh, what other people you know, like pop songs or anything, because I improvised and I made up my own songs. In fact, there was one uh, opportunity I had in which I played in front of the entire high school and I wrote a song. And unfortunately, it's for, you know, a, a friend that passed away in a car accident. But it was an opportunity for me to be able to share, again, my message, art and beauty through music. All right. And I was able to you know, say something that I couldn't say just by getting in front of a microphone, like, you know, at, you know, 14, 15 years old, yeah, he was a really good guy, like, this way I was able to play something in music and kind of, you know, maybe for that one brief moment in time, you know, everyone in that room or most people in that room, we could have connected through music, right? So there's, there's a lot of power there that I believe in. Um, so uh, anyway, I wanted to just learn stuff. So that's why in my method I have what we call the foundational. All right, it's just kind of a play on foundational. So we're having fun. Now the foundational is your uh, uh, rhythm, it's your technique, it's your reading music. Those three elements right there, if you focus on those three elements, you're going to get a great foundation at the instrument. Just real briefly, I just want to explain each of them. Rhythm, you've got to have rhythm. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, if, if you're watching me right now, you understand that, yeah, i got to have rhythm in order to be able to play. Otherwise, it just all falls apart. So we know that's a no-brainer. Technique, that's kind of another no-brainer as well. I mean, you have to have a certain amount of fluidity to be able to play the instrument. And, and, and you're, you're like, I know, we're always wondering, how do we get more fluidity? How do we make it so that we can get more dexterity and more flow and more expression out of this instrument? 
The third one is kind of interesting, reading music, because a lot of people are like, well, why do I have to know how to read music? Uh, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail on that, because I'll do another video on that, because there's a lot I can say on that, uh, that really I feel is very important for you to know. But let's just talk, you know, let's talk turkey, <laughs> to use a Thanksgiving reference. And those of you that are international, you know, you might not celebrate Thanksgiving, but turkey's kind of like the, the dish here, uh, those poor turkeys. Um, but my wife is vegetarian, so she does the tofurkey you know, the tofu turkey. Um, so anyway, uh, reading music is extremely important because that's how we communicate as musicians, right? Uh, if you're going to go to another musician and say like, yeah, it's kind of like a C chord and it kind of goes to an F chord, can it be done? Absolutely, sure. I mean, I could write out here all of the notes. I could say, okay, it's a C, it's an E, it's a G, then it goes C, F, and A, and then it goes C, E flat, G. I could do that. I could have my whiteboard. I could, you know, play all the notes for you, okay? Um, but the problem with this method is that nobody in the real world, in the real music community, speaks this language. Okay? This is me basically telling you, it's me, it would be me showing you, look, this is how I kind of learn it, or this is how I teach my students, but guess what, when you get out into the real world, if you're on a gig or you're going to play with somebody else, you want to know what they're going to do? They're going to do this to you. They're going to say, hey, oh, here you go, here's the sheet music. And then if you're like I was, you're going to look at that and you're going to think, I can't read music. And then now what happens? Now you feel really bad because you can't read it, right? So reading music is extremely important. Now, do you have to be able to put a Chopin uh, etude in front of you and be able to read that hands down? No, 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 no. That's not what we're talking about when we're talking reading music. We're talking at least basic melodies, starting to understand chords, but then also understanding that F clef as well, right? The G clef and the F clef. All right, so that's all of the foundational stuff. And you'll notice that uh, on the site now, at least in the shopping cart, in the store, pianowithwilly.com slash store, you'll see that <clears throat> uh, I've added in all of those uh, categories from the Piano with Willie method, right? So you can see all of those categories listed right there um, so that you can, you know, choose what to work on. Now we have the foundational stuff, and that's song style concept. Learning a song, learning a specific style, or learning a concept, all right? Um, those are important and they're fun. So like that's the kind of stuff like, okay, if we're just going to learn our dominant seventh chords, like how do we build those dominant seventh chords, all right? You're like, so go through the lesson, we do the dominant seventh chords. Now, a lot of you wonder, well, how, okay, that's great. I got that. How does this all, like how do I structure this for my practice routine, all right? The first thing you do is... You work on a foundational lesson, all right? So you have a foundational lesson. This might be rhythm, it might be reading, it might be technique. Let's just for right now say that it's rhythm, okay? So you work on this rhythm lesson. You might work on that rhythm lesson for a week or two. Now, at first, this is kind of like, ah, man, you might be like, you know, this is boring or whatnot. Yeah, you know what? Maybe it might be a little bit boring. Never in my lessons am I going to say that you're never going to be bored. Because guess what? If it's all like bing, bang, boom, exciting all the time, I'm like jumping around, like acting like a, you know, like a clown or whatnot, am I teaching you music or am I entertaining you? I think my job is to teach you music so that guess what? You can do the entertaining. You're the one out there entertaining. Not me entertaining you. I want to teach you so that you express yourself and you get out there and entertain people. So some of this stuff... Yes, it might be boring, but you know what? I just ran in the gym this morning. Let me tell you, I don't like running, and it's pretty boring for me. But I do it, why? Because I know it's going to be good for me, and I know I have to do it. So there's some things you just, you got to do. Rhythm. You work on rhythm. Then, the next step, so you might do this for one to two weeks, right? Then, the next step is you do a foundational, all right? Now, this might be working on a specific song, or maybe even working on a concept. Usually, I would say, if you're doing a foundational uh, lesson here, you know, maybe you don't want to necessarily just do a concept because it might be a little too much theory all at once. That's for you to decide. If you're an intermediate to an advanced level player, then sure, you could, you could handle foundational and concept lessons. For instance, you might work on a technique lesson. You know, if you're more intermediate, you might work on a technique lesson like the faster fingers, and then you might also do a concept lesson like, you know, creating bass lines or whatnot, right? So it's a lot of theory, but 
if you're an advanced and an intermediate advanced level player, I think that kind of stuff is fun, and I bet you probably think that kind of stuff is fun too. So here you might have a song. Okay? So see what happens? You have a rhythm, you have a song, you have foundational, you're working foundational, you're working a fun, right? You could be doing these two lessons at the same time. Okay? So these both can be done at the same time. But now what happens is now you've created structure for yourself. Right? Now you have a structure of like, okay, I'm going to work on my core foundational elements. Rhythm, technique, reading music, and then I'm also going to do something that's a little bit fun. Okay? Um, this stuff is extremely important. This is the kind of stuff that makes it so that you know, when, when, you know, when you're getting tired, when you're getting you know, kind of frustrated, this is your roadmap. Now, we're going to be talking a lot more about this stuff in the upcoming weeks. Uh, and months because quite honestly, this is what makes my program different, right? There's a lot of piano teachers out there. I'm, I'm sure you've probably seen some of them. You might have even taken lessons with some of them. Some of you might be taking lessons with them right now. Absolutely fine. There's plenty of room for all of us to teach and plenty of room for everyone in the market to learn. So there's always ideas that you can learn from other teachers. Now I'm going to tell you honestly, right? I always, I'm always honest with my students. I disagree with some of the teaching methods. I disagree with certain methods of like just showing notes and whatnot. And I disagree with that because this isn't just like, oh, well, I've kind of like learned like, you know, from, from teaching. No, I've actually studied teaching, right? One of the reasons that, that I, I come up with all of this stuff is because I've created books and curriculum. I have, you know, major publishers who, who have uh, printed my music. You know, I have uh, teachers worldwide that actually use my Jazz Kids materials with their students, right? So that, like, that's kind of my mind. I also do coding, so... That's kind of like the way I look at this stuff very analytically. And what I found over the years is that when a student just learns the notes, well, yeah, sure, they're going to learn how to play it. That's perfect. Great. You learn how to play it. But you know what? My job, as I see it, besides helping you put art and beauty into the world through self-expression, is that I'm going to try and make it so you don't need me forever. Right? You don't have to constantly like go from one lesson to the next lesson. So at some point it's like you learn some techniques from me and then it's like, guess what? You take a song that I haven't taught you and you start to apply those techniques. Now I understand that there's always going to be stuff you're going to need more help on and that's why we're here. Okay? That's why we've created this whole method. And this method isn't like something, I don't want you to think, oh yeah, you know, Willie created this, you know, two weeks ago, you know, in order for Black Friday and whatnot to like sell me a bunch of stuff. No, okay? This is stuff I believe in, all right? You could tell, just you know, like, I couldn't sell this to you if I didn't believe in this, all right? This method works. I've seen it work. And if you take a look at the testimonials from students, you'll see that it works for them as well. But as we move along, we realize that, okay, here's a better way of structuring this. Here's a better way of making it so the student can get from here to here. Because I know you all have goals. If you're watching me, you have a goal. You obviously want to play. Like, nobody wants to just watch me like dance around here and like, you know, act like a, you know, a silly person. You have a goal to want to play. All right, so that's my whole like pep talk. I said we were going to do some coffee, right? So I got my coffee cup. We got our Jazz Edge coffee cup. And just so you know like how serious we are about this, we, I, we have a saying on our coffee cup. Bringing art and beauty to the world through music, one student at a time, right? And in the team here, which you, we'll have, we'll have a little surprise on Saturday, so you, you'll, you'll see. But anyway, the team here, we all believe this. We're all here trying to help you, right? Um, so it's really important to us, to, you know, to communicate with you. If you have questions, please feel free to get in touch with us. All right, so uh, any questions? All right. Uh, why... And when would I use 9th, 11th, and 13th chords in my music? All right. Um, oh, oh, and before I answer that question, let me just tell you quick in case you were looking at this. This is all of the people uh, who submitted uh, for the uh, free Skype lesson with me. All right. So very briefly, I'm going to do a drawing. Uh, in a little while, maybe about another 10 or 15 minutes on this, okay? And then if you've already submitted your name, all right, you don't have to submit it again. You're already in this bucket, okay? Um, if you haven't submitted your name, I would, it's a free lesson. 
Okay, if we're going to do a free Skype lesson and we're going to do uh, a follow-up as well, all right? I'm not going to try and sell you and say, hey, oh, hey, get in my lesson. No, 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 no. It's a free lesson. If you're a member of the site and you're not a member of the site, it doesn't matter, okay? It's going to be a free lesson. Um, so anyway, we're going to be doing this drawing in just a few minutes, so stay tuned for that. Put that down there. All right. Um, 9, 11, and 13s are chord tensions. I've talked about that before, and I actually talked about it a little bit uh, in the lo uh, last live training as well, which is on the site for members, so you can take a look at that. Um, but the question is, why and when would I use them? All right? The why is, if I just play, you know, just a basic C7 chord. You know, like let's let's say that's my melody or whatnot. You can hear this C7 chord sounds a bit what blocky, doesn't it? And we call this what we call it a block chord, right? And or a seventh chord. So we can have both of those terms, block chord or a seventh chord. But what happens is if we look at how this chord is structured, what do we see here? We see third, third, third up at the top here, okay? That's a major third, that's a minor third, that's a minor third, okay? So a major third, minor third, minor third, stacked on top, okay? So, now, when you look at that and you think about that, what did I just say? I said third, third, third. Now, third, 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 immediately, maybe you might start to be cluing into this and saying, there's a lot of thirds in that chord, isn't it? All right? This is what we would call tertially based, right? It's a tertial chord versus choral chords, which are more like like that kind of stuff, right? Based in fourths, okay? So that sound right there is, quite honestly, kind of boring at times, but it has its place. Depending on the type of music that I'm playing, actually tonight I'm playing at Mohegan Sun Casino, ironically enough. Uh, so if you're in Connecticut, come on out tonight. I'm down at the Wolf Den at uh, 7 o'clock, right? And I'm playing with this Zydeco band. Now, when I'm playing with a band like that, I might actually utilize chords like this. So, so you see how I'm like taking an inversion of the chord, right? But I'm basically utilizing a basic block chord. And a lot of times when playing with a blues band or more of a rock, pop kind of band, basically anything outside of uh, a, a jazz sound, I wouldn't add my 9, 11, and 13s. Or maybe I would only add my 9s. Okay, so now, why would I add the 9, the 11, and the 13? I add it for a little bit of spice. I add it for a little bit of variety. If I put that 9 on there, okay, you can see that, all right, now I get... I get some tension up there. But again, it's based in thirds, isn't it? All right? So I might want to rearrange how I play this chord. This, this was, I can tell you, when I was a younger student, this always like confused me. How am I supposed to play a nine chord? Am I supposed to do this all with one hand? You know, that's, that's, that's insane. How am I going to do that? Well, here's the first thing. If I do this, it's still a C7 with a ninth added. Okay, see that ninth in there? All right. Now, of course, this doesn't sound very good because it's a little too low. But if I did it up... Like a, a F7 chord like that, yeah, it's okay, right? But I got my nine in there, so that's one option. The other option is you just get rid of the root, you play the third, the seventh, and your ninth, okay? And now here you go. Notice I left out the fifth because the fifth doesn't really add much to the chord. I could add it back in if I want to, or I could just leave it out, right? Um, now, in a chord like this. You might wonder, well, what about the bass? Ah, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So typically what would happen is if I'm going to do these chords, then I might... Let's talk quickly about what I'm doing here. I'm hitting root, chord, and then I go like to the fifth, and then back to the chord. Why do I go to the fifth? Because if I keep going back to the root, it's going to sound boring. Okay? I mean, it's really that simple. Listen to that versus. So let me do that slow. And, and I'll, you know, I'm just doing just a simple lick. So really, you don't have to even worry about the right hand. But I'm just adding it just so you can hear some other stuff. I'll do that just so you can see the top three notes, all right? But really, don't worry about those three. It's really down here that you're looking for. So I hit root and I do it in octaves. See how I hit the chord? Go down to the fifth chord. Root, chord, fifth, chord. Okay? 
So now when to use these chords, when to use the 9s, 11s, and 13s, there is no rule that I could say, oh, you always do this. I can give you some guidelines though. Um, when you're playing like a jazz tune, right, then you're typically going to add in your 9s. Right? Uh, and it, even in playing like blues or like you know more rock pop, a lot of times you can get away with your ninths as well. So if I'm playing like with a with a blues band, I might hit you know chords like that, in which I have the third, the seventh, and the ninth. Okay. Um, the judge of this. Besides the musicians that you're working with, if they're like, you know, if you're getting looks of like, what are you playing? They, well, then you want to uh, readjust. The judge of this really is right there. It's your ears. Okay? And this is why we always want to be actively listening to what it is that we're doing. Okay? This active listening is extremely important. So, um, if it's sounding a bit odd to you, and then this sometimes is where you can actually even use instinct. Like gut instinct. Trust your instincts. You know, really trust your instincts. If it sounds like, yeah, something's just not right, then something probably is not right. And then you need to just kind of like readjust, right? But the best thing you can do for yourself as a player is remain aware, not only of your body for technique, but then keep your ears active. You know, if you're like looking at the TV screen to see, you know, what, what, what's, you know, what the score is on the game while you're playing, you're not in the, you're not in the game. Right? You're like paying attention to the game, right? You're gonna be in the game when you play, right? When I'm playing with other musicians, I, I close my eyes most of the time when I'm playing. Okay? The only time I open my eyes is a lot of time when I just I, I look up, you know, look at the drummer or bass player, make sure okay, boom, you know, we're gonna end, we're gonna do this or whatnot. Um, but I'm not like looking around like, oh hey, how you doing? Oh yeah, I'll see you next week. And, oh yeah, like I, I gotta be honest with you, like those types of players, I'm like, in, one, I'm in awe of them because like, man, they just talk so freely while they're like playing their stuff. But it's, second of all, like, kind of like, man, are you like really into this, or are you like more there to like schmooze, right? So remain aware of what you're doing. Stay in the game, right, and keep your ears active. They're going to be a lot of your judge. Now, that's not a cop-out answer. I don't want you to think I'm just like, oh, you know, Willie's not answering the question. That is the answer to the question. The answer is that when to know how to use 9, 11s, and 13s is, first of all, start putting them into your practice routine and start listening to, like, all right, what does it sound like? Like, if you have a major chord, all right, and you're going to add in, like, a sharp 11 in there, all right, well, do you like that sound? Okay? I think that's a beautiful sound. Right? You might hate the sound. If you hate the sound, but I tell you theoretically that's correct, so what are you going to do? You're going to play it just because I told you theoretically it's right? No, you should always play, you know, what you feel, what, what, you know, what's inside, you know, what, what, what needs to come out. So these tensions are spice. Just like in a recipe, we don't have to add in every spice that the recipe tells us to add in, right? You know, we can decide, yeah, a little less salt, a little more pepper, a little bit of hot pepper flakes, you know, like that kind of stuff, right? So anyway, uh, hopefully I've answered that uh, enough for you. Um, uh, okay, let's see here. All right, uh, let me try going down here. How can I, let me do this one, let me try selecting. Uh, how can I start to add chords in the right hand to a single note melody without it sounding clunky? Okay, uh, let me give you a, a perfect way of doing that. What I would suggest that you do is a lot of times your melody will be, this is a, this is a good trick, uh, is your melody will be a note from the chord. Okay, so first of all, again, that awareness thing, make sure that you know, like, okay, well, it, like, how is your melody functioning on the chord? If you have, a, again, a C7 chord, and let's just take a G, okay? So and you want to start to add in, you know, like start, start to fill in some notes there or whatnot, all right? Or, you know, like here's the first uh, couple of notes of my romance. I love this tune. Okay? So here, see how I added in this? Well, first of all, this is a pickup, so let's not worry about that. It's really this note on a B-flat major 7 chord. Okay? So how can I disperse these notes? Well, first of all, I need to know how is this note, the melody note, functioning on B-flat major 7. And without asking the question right now, I know I could, but uh, it's going to function as the fifth on a B flat major seven chord. So immediately that means I can not have to put it in down here. I can put it in down here if I want to. That's, that's something important to know. I could double it if I want to, but I don't have to, 
right? So you'll see sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. Really, it's, you know, it's just uh, all depends on how I'm feeling that day. Now, 